Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, and today I'm hanging out with Eric Stave. And today we're uh, starting a new series. What does your alignment say about you? Lawful good. Jump down to the description below where you can learn how to game with Nerdarchy through our newsletter, as well as gain tips about RPGs from us to you. All right, so you've been playing RPGs for a while. You know what the ali alignments are, but there's sometimes people get a little bit, you know, sketchy on what exactly well, they need nothing, to do. Well, nothing starts a fight. Nothing starts a D&D &D fight like alignment. So alignment <laughs> is pretty you know, specific to Dungeons and Dragons. It's been in the game since the very beginning. Uh, so we're going to talk about lawful good, also sometimes referred to as lawful stupid. Um, and let's see what 5th edition says about uh, the lawful good alignment. So lawful good. Creatures can be counted on to do the right thing as expected by society. Gold dragons, paladins, and most dwarves are lawful good. Done. That's what that's what it's, <laughs> that's what it says in the fifth edition player's handbook. And Dave's like, that's it. Can we grab an older <laughs> an older edition? And by happenstance, I happen to have my uh, fourth edition book somewhat handy. And there's a little bit more. They they stretch it just a little bit. It says the lawful good alignment. An ordered society protects us from evil. If you're lawful good, you respect the authority of personal codes of conduct, laws, and leaders, and you believe that those codes are the best way of achieving your ideals. Just authority promotes the well-being of its subjects and prevents them from harming one another. Lawful good characters believe just as strongly as good ones do in the value of life, and they put even more emphasis on the need for the powerful to protect the weak and lift up the downtrodden. The exemplars of lawful good alignment are shining champions of what's right, honorable, and true, risking or even sacrificing their lives to stop the spread of evil in the world. When leaders exploit that authority for personal gain, when laws grant privileged status to some citizens and reduce others to slavery or untouchable status, law has given into evil and just authority becomes tyranny. You are not capable of challenging, so you are not only capable of challenging such injustice, but morally bound to do so. However, you would prefer to work within the system to right such problems rather than resorting to more rebellious and lawless methods. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. So <laughs> that actually is a pretty good uh, write-up for the alignment of lawful good. And people say 4th edition is bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that totally blew 5th edition out of the water there. So uh, we've talked about different things in our game when alignment comes up. And, and uh, you know, some of the things being, you know, how to play them different. Some of the things being, uh, we had a pallet in our game that would just mow down women and children if they were of a evil perceived uh, of race. a race that they perceived as being evil. You know, and and you know, I've heard the argument. Well, that makes them not lawful good. That you know, that's an evil act. Uh, you know, and there's so many different ways that you can look at it. And you know, the problem with alignment in D and D is it's kind of ambiguous and open to interpretation. Yes, and not only in, you know open to interpretation but open to the character's perception as well and that's the thing that you know tends to get a little bit touchy in that particular example our, our buddy mike or frequently referred to uh throughout the years as psycho he played a paladin that from his belief orcs are evil end of story it goes no further than that orcs are evil they must be wiped from the face of the earth he sees an orc he's going to kill it doesn't matter whether it's a, uh, a baby or whether it's the the orc you know war chief it's gonna die. Evil's evil. Uh, so, in this series, we want to discuss a little bit not so much about alignment per se, but how to play the alignment and how 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 your character um, should interact with the world or could interact with the world. Because there's there's different ways. Like we said, there's different ways to play. So, the, lawful good. The four, the fourth edition book says that you want to work whenever possible within the laws of society itself and you want to uplift those around you you are a force to number one work you know you're a force for the law you 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 want to abide by it you believe in it you believe in it it's something that's important to you and being a, a good person your acts are going to generally be good that doesn't mean as with any alignment, you can do things that are against what's there, but as a lawful good character, those those decisions where you stray from your alignment are going to weigh heavily upon you, and you might call those things into question time and time again. Uh, you know, and 
if you want to RP that kind of thing, all right, well, you rolled crappy on that roll. All right, well, your brain must have been on, on that, on, on, you know, on that face of the person that you killed when you knew you really shouldn't have. And you could keep bringing those things back up. And you might need to find a way to atone and do something to make you forget or make you um, believe that, you know, it was right or whatever have you. Well, or just resolve yourself of it. Yes. You know, so basically... All atone. Yeah. So... That being said, now you do that too often. You're no longer lawful dead. Uh, exactly. The yeah. more the more things, the more you know, dark spots that you know you have on your soul, as you might call it, um, you you're gonna stray. And as with anything, you can you can push the boundaries of your alignment. But the more often you do it, it might be because you're trying for an alignment change, or your DM might say, "Dude, all right, I'm sorry, I can't." I can't abide by this anymore. You're you're consistently going against what's on your sheet. You're going to need to change so, that. So so a character playing to lawful good is going to believe in order, laws, and they have they have genuinely have a a good moral compass. You want, they're they're going to be a compassionate and they're more likely to be a loving, compassionate individual. Um, now, oddly enough, like fifth edition says, most you know, dwarves are generally lawful good, right? Mm -hmm. Now. Which is interesting because dwarves are generally kind of portrayed as being gruff and grumpy and, and probably not like the easiest people to get along with. Well, they might not be easy to get along with. The idea there is dwarves believe in order. There's a process of things which then generally makes sense. And the surface dwarves are generally good. So that that's where that comes from. Yeah, they're going to do the right thing for the right reasons. They, they that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a, that they are charismatic and that you're going to get along with them. It's just that they they believe in order and right. So if you're playing a lawful good character, like essentially you're a law abiding citizen, and you also believe in doing the right thing. Which, you know, as an adventurer, this becomes a bit odd because adventurers tend to go out and murder things <laughs> and kill them. And, and so, you know, and not always, not always like, so, not they always kill justifiable. Take their stuff. It's essentially, that's it, right? You know, if you're, if you're a lawful good character and you're going into the monster's lair... Well, that's its home. <laughs> it's home, and you want to kill it and take its stuff. That's not exactly a lawful good act. Now, if that monster is rampaging across the countryside and wreaking havoc, killing people, taking prisoners, then yes, you could ju you can justify your your actions. Mm -hmm. Now, for the uh, you know the the lawful good alignment is the the top of the alignment the alignment spectrum. It it is e easy to play because you always know what you should be doing. Um, because you you can ask yourself, is this right? Should I be doing it? And you know, if you have any question, all right, well then you need to back off. But it also makes it challenging for the DM to write adventures for lawful good characters. And a lot of people have played characters like, well, I'm going to be lawful good because I'm going to protect people and I'm going to do do what's right. And they don't think about the other side of the spectrum of, okay, well. I've been sent on this adventure to go do this thing. Should I be doing this thing? There is that. And, like, so one of the things that always comes up, right, and here's the problem with lawful good, and it's not really the, so much a problem as lawful good, is, but it, it does come up, and those are the, those are the characters that creates the friction within the party, is you're going to have this instance where you take a prisoner, and there's going to be people in the party that want to torture the prisoner for information. Well... A good person is is generally opposed to torture. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing to slay a, an enemy uh, in self defense, or even in to, to, in to the heat end, of combat. Yeah, in the heat of combat, or to keep them from uh, doing further harm, right? But to actually torture them to extract information is not a good act. You mm -hmm. know, you're, you know, some people. You know, the argument is well, for the greater good. You know, we need this information so, so you know. Other harm isn't isn't right. isn't you know put against people, but you know when you go down that road, like when you when you're morally compromising your own values in order you know for something like the greater good, you, you know in the lawful good character's mind, you're becoming closer and closer to that which you basically have set out to, to stop. Yes, you know, and, and that's where the problem lies. 
you know, a chaotic good where a chaotic good character might be like, well, whatever it takes, or a lawful neutral character is, I don't care about right or wrong. How's the law written, and I'm going to follow that. Yes. The lawful good character, he actually actually thinks he actually thinks about. Uh, he has to follow the law, and he has to think of the consequences. Yes. You know, what is the ultimate outcome? You know, is what I am doing making things better? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and you know, when you're looking, like, at the torture thing, you know, maybe, you know, the information could be useful and could make things better. But am I, you know, but at the same time, do I have to become less a, of a good person to do it? Mm-hmm. And and then it, 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 it begs the question on the next scale of, okay, well, once you've taken the prisoner, what happens if you're in mid, mid-story, mid, mid-mission? Well, do you have to stop it and take him back? There's a, there's people that are going to be like, well, we need to kill him now because he knows what 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 our mission is, and that's going to be even further of a problem for the lawful good character because possibly like in, I I really enjoyed uh, the fourth edition version because it says just authority right now depending on where you fall. Now, if you're actually a paladin of a just god and a good uh-huh. god, you actually may be just authority. Like, going back to our instance of the paladin that murders women and children, uh-huh. you know, if you're acting, if you are if you actually are that just authority in your mind, uh-huh. and what you're doing is creating, spreading the uh, greater good and is for the greater good um, by abolishing evil wherever it may lie, even if it's in the heart of an infant, um, you know, you you know, you you're, you really are acting within your code of honor, right? Yes. And, and here's the thing too, like as horrendous as it is to cut down, you know, women ch- women and children that are non-combatants, or let's just say non-combatants because women can be combatants as well. Yeah. As, as horrendous as it is to cut down non-combatants, the, the the real difference, in my opinion, is how a lawful good might go about it. Mm. You know, um, it's not it's not something it, it, the the just because they're willing to do it doesn't mean it does not leave them with a heavy heart mm-hmm. or that they're going to be necessarily cruel. Right. So that that is also another hallmark. Well, and, and when we were playing with this, this this character that played the paladin that attacked the, the, the orc women and children, you know, you were the DM and it was in third edition. And after we slew the last, uh, you know, the last combatant, the women and children start running away. And the character is like, well, they're they're running through my uh, my, my friend area. I have combat reflexes. I have combat reflexes. So like he had a high dex at that point in time, and he's wielding a great sword. So he literally is like slay, 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 and kills three of them as they're running through. Yeah, basically so, he spins in a circle and with his sword and three bodies at the ground. So I don't see him as having the heavy heart, but you could absolutely portray it of all right i am i am taking life needlessly because it's something that this is this is evil so like you could literally be all right i'm making attack rolls with tears in my eyes <laughs> well yeah so yeah he was fulfilling his grim du- duty but to say needlessly that again that's a matter of perspective, perspective yes. right if if he just if he, what he saw was he just ended three sources of evil that wasn't needless it was absolutely right. necessary well th- again that's the spectrum so so many people look at these fine lines for these alignments and each one really does have a spectrum in in, in and of itself of how you can play it you can play the lawful good where every single action you take is weighed against lawful and good and and you you look at it uh, you know, there's other other times where it's like, okay, I'm on the other end of the spectrum, where my main goal is to follow the law and be good, but I go, I go utterly crazy up at the top and utterly crazy at the bottom, and I go up and down around this line. You know, so like every alignment has that same spectrum of how of how extreme you want to play it. Right. It's just a matter of how how. Overall, overall, you know how true you stay to whatever alignment you are. Uh-huh. Um, that that is kind of like the that's that's the, the important part is determining for for a DM determining. Well, are they really that alignment uh-huh. still? It, you know, I always kind of view it almost as like you know a dimmer switch. You know, it kind of like goes back and forth. Yes. You know, amongst that alignment, the sign curve. Yeah, you know, and 
Now, granted, if it swings too much, then it could swing you right out of that alignment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because an- another aspect too is a character with a, a post a personal code, which you know speaks to being lawful more so than anything else. And like you may do things that morally seem seems like you're in alignment with being good because of your code, but you may not actually care about that at all. It doesn't mean anything to you. Mm. You're actually lawful evil, but you don't want to attack unarmed. Uh, Civilians or individuals because it's beneath you. They, you, you have such disdain for them. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not an, an, an out of any goodness in your heart. Right. You know, so that, that's another thing. Like when creating your character, and if you're playing the lawful good palette, and what it, you know, what are your tenets that you're following and adhering to? Because uh, that would that would put a further restriction upon your actions and how you play that character. Right. You know, I we just recently played a game where I played a paladin and, and it wasn't D and D and there was no alignments, but I played tried to play that character how I envisioned a lawful good paladin would be, mm-hmm. uh, and even though. Uh, there wasn't a lot of opportunities for role playing. W- the ones that did arise, I my goal was to play that character kind of as being compassionate and loving, yes. and, and, and it, wanting and to spread across. peace. And it, and it really it really did come across. Now it was uh, it, it was definitely interesting to to see a paladin in another another rule set. Yeah. Um, so so like you know you can like you can like I think like an awesome example of a paladin if you want to see how to play. A, play that character uh, in a way that, that isn't playing lawful stupid and isn't like super extreme even though they have such high, have such a high moral compass and really they it's an epitome of lawful good in my opinion Michael Carpenter uh, Knight of the Cross from Dresden Files yes. you know that character is portrayed as like such an awesome Christian and person that you know even though he does these things uh, that he deems necessary uh, he's not actually, and and even things that he disdains and he's against, he he doesn't pass judgment on others that do. That's the, in his opinion, that's not his job. Unless he's unless he's called to, mm-hmm. and and you know, uh, and when I say called to, like as long if you have a, a diametrically opposed view to him, that's fine. But it's it's only when you cross the line that he take would take action. Yes. You know if you know if you're you know. If he, you know, if you're evil, that's not enough for him to strike you down. But if you're evil, committing atrocities, he will step in. You know, he will put himself in harm's way to to see that, you know, innocents are protected. And he will even go so far as to say, like, all right, this is not my fight. This is not for me to to get in, involved with. And there's there's times, you know, spoiler alert, that he's like, it's not the duty of those who bear these swords to put down evil it's his duty to save those who took up the coins yes yeah, so, it's very like, specific yeah it's a specific specific to that setting but like you could literally play a paladin and then it's like all right you can always allow you know for when you're dealing with an intelligent adversary you know you can be like look i don't kill i'm i'm here to save people and put them on a on a path that's right and just as opposed to I'm just gonna kill everybody and take their stuff. You know, yeah, oh, I kill evil. Kill, 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 kill. Yeah, you could absolutely be playing, you know, the the paladin that that is calling for, you know, calling for the bad guys, the enemies to repent, even as he's swinging his sword, you know, and and he and he's and he he means it honestly, like he's willing to accept that right. if you lay down arms and, and let you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, there's definitely other ways of playing, you know, lawful good. Uh, you know, in like like we use the example of the dwarves not being charismatic and not being particularly likable, mm-hmm. but they still uphold those tenets. So like, you know, a watchman could be the same way. Like right. he does his job and he believes in it, but he doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be a nice guy to be around. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, or you know, or you could you know go the other way where you're more like kind of like a dirty Harry kind of watchman and like, you know, you bust heads and make things happen for the good of the city. Right. You know, so. So, what do you guys think? You know, is there any, any points that we missed on lawful good that you want to bring up? You can put those down below while you're at it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Can check us out at nerdarchy.com. So, until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.